everyone. Welcome back to Land Investing Online, where we teach students how to profitably buy and sell vacant land. This is the simplest, least competitive, and most profitable form of real estate. Join our Discord at landinvestingonline.com. We have a ton of successful entrepreneurs and land investors in that group. It's a great place to learn, and Ron and I are very involved. So go to landinvestingonline.com to sign up for our free Discord. I'm joined once again by my brother, Ron Apke. How are you doing? Doing well. We're really excited for this topic. I think this is going to help a lot of people. Yeah, it's an interesting topic because it kind of relates to everyone, no matter what you're doing, even if you're a doctor, I feel like. So this can relate to everyone. It's a more broad topic, not around the land industry as much. Um, but before we get into that, let's go over a question. How much time should I expect to spend on the phones after sending out my first mail? So when my mailer hits is how they put it. So how we acquire, if you guys don't aren't familiar with land investing, we send out mail with pricing on it, and then we get calls back and get uh, purchase agreements and get the person under contract to buy their land. So there's a specific time after we send this, it usually takes a couple of weeks for the um, potential sellers to get the mail. Does that all make sense, Ron? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Um, so yeah, when it, when it gets, when it, when they get the mail, there's a, a large influx of, of calls that they get. So this person wants to know how much time they're going to be spending on the phones. Cause we get a ton of callbacks from those mailers. What do you think, Ron? I think it matters. Like we use an answering service. We don't answer any of our calls. We call back once our answering service tells us that's that a seller is interested. Um, and we don't call back to people who are just angry and not happy. But what I, when we first started, we answered the phone ourselves, obviously. It saves money and it just gets you used to talking to people. So I, I think at first, it's probably, it's really hard to put a number on this. This is a really good question. It might be, third. I mean, it matters how much you talk. It might be 30 minutes, an hour for every thousand mailers or something like that. If you're answering the phone yourself, you're going to talk to them for five minutes or so. Um, I don't know if that's reasonable or just making a number up, but it's not going to be five hours for every thousand uh, mailers you send. Yeah, it's not bad. And you can spend a dedicated time. Like you can call back if you're working a nine to five job, you can call back in the evenings or whenever you have time. Average call probably takes three to four minutes. I'd say some um, are hate calls and they don't even want to talk to you. And then some are actually interested for the interested buyers. They might take longer um, because you also might be negotiating and calling them back and following up and things like that. So there's a lot that goes into this, but don't expect to be a full-time like, um, sales, uh, sales guy, just spending 40 hours a week on the phones. It's not like that. Um, although when you send enough mail, it can be a full-time job definitely, but for, for what we're referring to here, it's, it's really not. And especially if you have a call service. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I don't, I don't think we have to go much deeper into that. If you're answering, if you have a call service, it's going to save, save you time. If you're answering yourself. You're going to deal with more hate calls, which isn't bad at first. Like it's not a bad thing to do. And then uh, you're just going to be on the phone a little more because the, those are people you wouldn't even talk to if you had a call service. Exactly. All right. Well, let's get into the show. Um, this week's topic or this, today's topic is motivation for entrepreneurs and how to stay motivated. It's a hot topic in our land community, although we, like we said, this isn't just for, for land, this is anything, any entrepreneurs, anyone just doing, I mean, this is a life question, really. Um, I had someone actually come up and ask me, how do I stay motivated when you have low spurts of energy and high spurts of energy? How do you play off them? Do, uh, what do you do when you're low, when you don't have that motivation? And how do you act off your high, high motivation times as well? Um, so there's a ton that goes into this, but Ron, you want to start it off? Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a really good topic. I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers for myself personally. It's still something I think everyone fights with on a personal level. Um, for myself, like those those high spurts of energy are is when I want to do the highest um, the highest level thinking tasks. So whether it's pricing or whether it's really uh, forming a new part of our business. We expand our business a lot and where we're sending mail and how we're sending mail. That's a lot of deep thinking stuff that I like to, when I'm feeling really good, it's when those high spurts of energy, like you're talking about, I think that's when I do those higher level activities. A lot of times that's early in the morning before I eat. I, I personally don't eat till noon or one o'clock or so. Um, and that helps my morning thinking. I get a lot done in those hours. Um, 
And then those lower times, which might happen once a week, might happen once every two weeks, something like that. Those lower times or even mid-level times, I'm going to do lower uh, level activities, uh, maybe more re repetitive acts. I hear a lot of people saying, and I think a lot of people in our land community kind of call them repetitive acts, that you just don't have to think as deep, but it's something that needs to be done. Uh, I think the worst thing, uh, for me personally, I think the worst thing is just doing nothing when I have those low spurts. Um, whether I, just scrolling on my phone is not going to get anything done. If I'm, I might spend time with my family during those low spurts. Like I just going to take a break here for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, um, and then get back to it. But getting something done always makes, gives me a little more motivation for the next thing. Yeah. Although it's like the hardest time to get something done. Cause you're pretty feeling lazy and want to curl up on the couch and scroll on your phone or whatever it is. Um, getting something done, going to the gym, going on a walk, uh, whatever it is to kind of get your mind off things, I think is also important. But you kind of hit it on the head, I think, because I have those same exact comments, just playing off your high energy, really getting those high productive, high focused things done while you have that motivation and energy. Um, I personally do that. I schedule all my things for the morning, similar to Ron, um, because I'm more productive in the morning. And I know after lunch, I'm less productive. I have less energy typically, like around one or two. So I'll do a lot of my tedious tasks or things I know aren't going to require too much focus and attention because I just don't work well at those times. Um, so it's really individualized approach, but I'm a huge believer in overall health um, relating to your motivation and productivity, just, you know, diet, working out, um, having hobbies and things you do that aren't work. Um, I think that's very important for me. I notice after, like, if I, if I um, have a good weekend, I'm out, I'm going to the beach, I'm fishing a little bit. I might get a few hours of work here and there. I'm not working all day. Like I do normally on weekdays. Um, but I come back Monday so much more refreshed. So I think having those hobbies and things you do and just getting an adequate amount of sleep are very, very important. Um, I even know when I get, I mean, every, that's pretty known when you don't get enough sleep, your focus, productivity, mood, everything's going to decrease. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. hundred percent. Like there'll, there'll be times when you stay up too late watching a sporting event or watching whatever, and then you still got to wake up at the same time, or I do personally, um, but, uh, you get those six hours instead of seven hours. It, it's a huge difference, not just on the following day, but even a couple of days down the line, it will affect me personally. So I think that's a huge sleep. Like you said, sleep, eating as best as you can and some kind of exercise. Uh, like you said, I, I like doing different types of exercise. I don't like just doing one thing because it, it'll just get, it becomes repetitive for me personally. Yes. So I, I like to kind of mix in whether it's, um, I play disc golf, I jog, I, I lift. It's just a different thing that I'm kind of, I listen to my body, honestly. I know I need to do something, but I listen to my body as far as what activity that's going to be. Me personally, I don't know how you feel about this, Dan. I think there's way too many people on, that's why I keep saying me personally, because I, I think, I think there's too many people on Instagram, on YouTube, on whatever, kind of selling one path or saying like, you need to do it like this. I think there's too many people as far as like, I think you need to listen to your body a lot. Not that you need to still take care of it, honestly, but I think way too many people are just trying to follow something exactly how someone else does it because they're successful or they appear successful on social media. Yeah. Um, one thing you mentioned, uh, disc golf, that's, I, I've never heard of that being physical activity, but I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad someone sees it that way. <laughs> no, I'm just it's, kidding. It gets you out walking a lot. It's I'm enjoyable. Sure. Yeah, it's enjoyable. And like for me, I do. I, I just picked up fishing. I don't know if I enjoy it or not yet. It's kind of boring. I get um, kind of uh, impatient. But I think just going out and not having my phone and stuff on, I, I'll go for like 30 minutes in, in the workday sometimes. And I'm just, you know, standing knee deep in the water, casting out my fish for I mean, it, I, and then I come back and I feel so much better. So it's not always about just going and getting exercise, just getting your mind off things. Um, but for me, having those hobbies is also really big. I, I'm, I'm a big advocate for uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, BJJ. I go pretty much every day, whether it's in the mornings or at night. I've noticed significantly my days are better when I go. I don't know why it is. I'm sure a lot of it's because of the, um, the movement and the exercise. And also a lot of it's just because the community and socializing and having that to look forward to. Um, even if I don't feel like going and even if it's a bad class and I feel I am hurt and I'm just exhausted from it or whatever it is, or I got my butt kicked, I've noticed that um, positive outcomes come from all those days. So I think having those things is really important and listen to your body, like 
today my shoulder hurt really bad. So I'm not going to go to jujitsu. Um, if my body's screaming, don't go, I'm not going to force myself to go. Like Ron said, there's so many people preaching one direction and it's really almost everything I feel like is individualized to your own person, um, your own self. I think you very subtly kind of said something that kind of caught my eye. And I think about it a lot too. And right now I'm living in a small city. It's 10,000 people, 12,000 people, but you said jujitsu for social activity. And I think as entrepreneurs, we ignore that a lot, especially with COVID over the last couple of years when just, it just wasn't, it, nothing was as social, but as an entrepreneur, you running your own business right now, we have five people who, five people in our company, three people who work for us. Um, it just, it's, it's talking to these same five people. It's not in person. We're all in different cities. What are your kind of thoughts on that? Like, like you said, I think that has a bigger effect on from the jujitsu than maybe not bigger than the exercise, but maybe bigger than you think as far as having that social aspect with people that aren't me or our employees. Yeah. And I, I, the thing with me and why, why it matters too, because I, I'm going to exercise no matter what I usually exercise quite a few days a week, five minimum, I'd say four or five minimum, usually about five or six, um, even if it's light exercise. So noticing that my jujitsu days are even better than when I'm exercising isn't just because exercise, because I'm exercising every day, no matter what it's, there's more to it. It's a community and it's socialization. And I personally work from home traditionally, and I was getting very stagnant and bored throughout the days and really found it difficult to stay motivated in my office. And I'm in it right now. Um, and I still work here quite a bit, but I decided to go and get an office um, downtown St. Petersburg in the Tampa area. And it gets me out and it also gets me socializing a little bit, but being around people who are highly motivated, it's one of those co-working type of spaces. And I have an office in there being around those people who are highly motivated, talking bubbly. There's just an energy there that I don't get sitting in my office. Like I don't, I, I just don't hear anything. I have no interactions with people here. It gets very stagnant. I think being around those people is very, very helpful. So what I've actually done is when I'm in these you know, low energy times. And I'm like, I can't get anything done. My brain's foggy. I can't really think through things properly. And I get those quite a bit. Um, I'll go and change up my scenery. I either go to my office or I'll go to a coffee shop. I think changing up the scene and energy, and it kind of gives me something to almost look forward to. And just, I don't, for me, it works very, very well. I don't know if it's just me or what, but I, I've really found having that office space or a different area to work with more people and energy and motivation around me really, really has been beneficial. Yeah. I think that's pretty common as far as like cliche you are, who are, who you're around or your closest group of people or who you become. Um, I think just being around like like you said, both of us working at home, I'm in a small city. I don't, I couldn't find a co-working space within 50 miles of me, to be honest, there's nowhere. So I'm, I'm moving to a big city. So I'm, a, I'm excited. I look at that as an investment. Like, yeah, I could be working at home and getting the same stuff done, but getting an office like you did and what I'm going to do, it, it's an investment as far as to be around other people it, to network. We're obviously big into real estate, opportunities will come up that will pay for five years of your office really fast. Um, you'll meet people in there and get a deal or something, and it's going to pay for it 10 times over. Uh, it's insane what it's already done. I've already sat in NFT meetings. They do these meetings. Like there's an NFT meeting. I sat in those. They do like a one cups, I, a 1 million cups thing where people pitch their business ideas to investors and you get to listen to those and go, um, even yesterday, I just asked, I said, is anyone a notary around here? And they're like, oh yeah, I'll go get them. And she came out and notarized my stuff and we had a conversation. She didn't charge me. So there it's paying for itself <laughs> right there. <laughs> but um, it's, it's really an investment, not only business, but personal because you are networking. I've really, really gone out of my way these last few months to network with people and just more social interactions. And I, it's really paying off on a personal and business level. I think it's just more connections, um, just takes one more deal or one more connection. And even if that connection can't help, they might know someone who can help. And there's just so many way things, ways things just connect in that aspect. So I think, um, I know we've gotten a ton into like relationships from this whole motivation, but I think being around these high, other highly individual or highly motivated, especially being a young entrepreneur, or entrepreneur in general, it can get very lonely. A lot of people are working by themselves, right? You have a business, it's you, you're working from your home um, and you have no employees right now. So it's just yourself. It can get very lonely and you go through these things a lot. Like there's ups and downs in businesses. 
having people around you that can help you or just talk to you who have been through it, other entrepreneurs is super beneficial on so many different levels. I think the, uh, I think it's a huge mind shift, a mindset shift in entrepreneurs when they kind of like you invested, obviously in an office, I'm going to invest in an office. Like when you look at it as an investment, those money spends, whether it's a course or, um, and it's just anything like that where you actually, or a coach, a lot of people, like I see a huge value in hiring a personal coach um, that you meet with once every two weeks or something like that. It's a big mindset shift when you do that. You, you cannot look at it or you shouldn't look at it as I'm spending money. It's an investment in yourself. It's an investment in your future. And the payoff is a lot of times tenfold. Um, but no, I know we kind of strayed away from the topic, Dan, but I think this is going to be helpful for people who are in the same situation because it is tough at times to be an entrepreneur, especially it's not as difficult. I feel like if we had our own office, we're in the same city and we had 10 people in our office working with us, um, right. but we're a hundred percent remote. So we got to find these ways to kind of interact and uh, just not be completely business focused and secluded on just sitting in front of our computer and uh, trying to buy and sell land. Yeah, because I mean, you can go down the buy and sell land rabbit hole and spend all your time doing that. But what relationships are you building doing that? So you got you got to really spend time from a business perspective on networking. Networking is very important for future business as well. Um, so if there's a few things that I'd really recommend, and we're not experts in this field, it's just really what what's worked for us. Um, and I think we do a decent job with it as of recent. I would, I would surround yourself with more entrepreneurs if possible. I don't know where you're located. Obviously, we have listeners all over, but surround yourself with someone who can kind of relate, you can talk to. If you're working from home, um, that's fine. I know a lot of people who work from home. I would just, if you do get in those low energy spurts, maybe change up the scenery, go to coffee shops. There's tons of entrepreneurs and people working remote at coffee shops. Um, and you, you see the same people over and over again. But I'd say that and exercise and just really finding a way to meet other entrepreneurs and um, that are doing similar things. That Those are my main advice. And then obviously stay active as much as possible. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all I really have. Yeah. To finish up, I think just like, don't let those low moments kind of snowball. I, I just think that's a good kind of closer on this. Like don't, don't beat yourself up about having a bad moment. And then it just kind of keep on beating yourself up for that last moment. Let, if you need a break, let yourself have a break. It's not the worst thing in the world. You, you'll get back to it, but don't beat yourself up about that short, whatever. Even if it's a full day break that you need, need to just go out in nature, just don't beat yourself up, up that, over that and let it snowball. Yeah. And, and I, I actually, one thing we haven't talked about much is a lot of our listeners have nine to five jobs. Um, so obviously if you have to be in an office from nine to five, um, your work is going to be much more strenuous a lot of times because you're going to that job and you're coming home and you have a lot more work to do. So for people like that, obviously it's not as flexible. And I know we talked about just going and taking hour walks or taking the day off. It might not be possible for you, but it's really about just finding your routine and finding what works for you. There's ways to do it. I worked a nine to five job for a long time and, and found ways to do it. It's really like Ron said, you can snowball and go down that path of low energy. And then it, it just keeps compounding and getting worse and worse. It's, you just got to break it up and don't let those affect you long-term because it happens to everyone. You don't need to feel down about it. At the end of the day, it's, it's normal and we're all human. So you just got to kind of listen to your body. Yep. That's all I have, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Like I said, we're not experts in this, but this is what has worked for us. I'd love to hear your guys' opinion. Comment below on the YouTube comments and let us know what you think or what you do. Um, it's a really hot topic and a lot of people have lots of opinions in, in uh, what they do. So visit landinvestingonline.com to join our free Discord server. Ron and I are personally involved. Ask us a question, we'll get back to you very quickly. And we love communicating in there. It's a really good place to start your land investing career. Thank you guys, have a good one. Thanks guys.